Okay, so this is the new version of uh, Aqua 4 Plus. The first thing you want to do is connect in that USB reading uh, unit before you fire up the program. So plug in the USB unit, fire up the new Aqua 4 Plus software, and you should be met with this screen here. The first thing you probably want to do is just double check a few of the settings, uh, certainly if it's the first time you've connected these units. You click down in the cog on the left hand side here, and you're met with the, the settings screen. The default data folder is where all your data is going to be contained, so you might want to change that to something a little bit more friendly. We've just got ours on a uh, folder we've created on our desktop here. Below it is the zoom factor. Uh, if it's the first time you've installed this, it'll be set at 1. And you can see it's not particularly easy to see all the fonts, so I like to just move that up to 1.5. It makes it much easier to read. The next thing you want to do is set your display units. So. As a default from the factory, certainly if they're brand new units, all these will be set as uh, PSI, so you want to just move them over to centimeters H2O. That'll make your life a little bit easier when you compensate your data. Once you're happy you've got all this set and you're happy with it, we can go back to the, uh, the main screen. So you want to connect your sensor. Being careful not to twist the connector in the end of the sensor, so just twist the collar. and then we should be able to hit the scan and it will pick up your sensor that's connected here. Um, there's some basic information, we can see how much free memory it's got, we can see what it's currently doing and we can see its battery percent. If you hover over the information we hear we can get the firmware version number, 2.4 is our most current version, the serial number and um, the pressure range at the very bottom there. We already have a file on this unit, um, we'll be making a new one, but um, with the, this is where all your files are, uh, will be saved. You can delete all your files using the delete all button here. There's also a function for real-time data logging. So this won't affect your recorded data in here, but we'll just give you real-time measurements. So we can do, uh, we can take a, just a single measurement now while it's on the desk. And you'll see it here. You can also graph these if you click this button here. So none of this data is saved on the unit, this is purely real-time measurements. What you really need to do next is uh, to set up a new logging job, especially with your new units. Normally you do your barometric uh, logger first so that your data is covered completely with uh, barrow data, but you click the set up logging button, we can give it a name test file 2 we've got here. If it's Certainly if it's a uh, first time you've connected you want to sync the device to your computer time. There's a delay function here if you want it to have a future start. We're not going to use that in this instance. And at the bottom here is where you put in your logging uh, schedule. So just for this test we'll set this to something a little bit more friendly. Uh, just one and then we'll change this to seconds just so we have some data it tells us here that we are going to use it on the memory very quickly so we're not going to be able to log for 30 days for this type we'll just set it to do 100 records which will be finished in two minutes once we're happy with everything here hit start and now we can see it's changed to active and we start to create a, a new file here uh, with the name we've just put in and when it was started there's some buttons here that will let us pause it, stop it, download it, or just examine the logging schedule here. So you can see here exactly what we've put on there. Next we need the uh, barrow. So with this file, we've, looked, we've done a test already here. We will download this to the computer. So retrieve the session and put it onto that designated folder that you set earlier. Here's a graph of the information that we've taken. This is actually a test we did yesterday, just so we have some data pre-prepared for you. You can again review the schedule and the logger information here. So we can close that. And we now moved over to the reports tab. Here's all of the data contained in that folder. So the uh, file we've just downloaded is test file one. Mm -hmm. 
and we've got a uh, sub barrow file there, I think. So to compensate our data, we click these two rings and it'll bring us to the barometric compensation screen. Normally you want your data to, to, with uh, depth of water. This is where you measure uh, from your datum. So once you've installed the device, you take an accurate depth to water and time within your recording interval. And we can just enter that here. You must also put in the time you took it and um, uh, the, the date. So that will cross-reference then internally with uh, one of the readings that are on the units to compensate your data. So this was actually data from a few days ago. Should be okay there. We select the barometric data file we want to pair with this level log data. And then we can open the report we've just created. So now we've got our pressure before compensation, our level depth to datum after compensation down here on the left, and then temperature. Um, once you've made this file, it's probably useful to export it. You can set your folder location. It's given it automatically the name of your level file and you can save it there. If you want to list your results, you can click on the middle button here and this will give you a list of your compensated readings and your start and finish times. This will give you minimum and maximum st statistics over the data you've just recorded and then this is just a full screen button. Um, if you want to delete the individual file, there's a delete button down here also. When you're in your report screen, you can individually delete using the little red X, and you can also search through your files using the search bar at the top. You can also filter them by date, size, and name. 